Today we're going to talk about two-digit subtraction. Now in our classroom there are two different ways that we look at to subtract two-digit numbers. One way is the traditional way where we have to borrow in some cases. The second way, which is a slightly newer one, is looking at it using mental math. I'm going to show examples using both the traditional and the mental math methods. On the test, I will not specifically ask students to use one method or the other. The students get to choose for themselves. What I will ask is for them to show their work regardless of what method they choose to use. So let's take a look at the first example. I have here 27 minus 19. In our traditional subtraction method, we start in the ones and we see that the bottom number is bigger. When my bottom number is bigger, I have to borrow. So I go next door to the tens place and I borrow one. So when I subtract two minus one, I end up with a one. I take that one ten and turn it into ten ones. I add that to the tens to the ones that I already have. So instead of seven, I now have seventeen. Now my top number is bigger. 17 minus 9 gives me 8. 1 minus 1 is 0. And we do not write the 0 there. We leave it alone. So our original problem, 27 minus 19, would equal 8. This is in the traditional way, the way that most of us learned how to subtract numbers. Let's take a look at it using some mental math. We're going to take the same problem, 27 minus 19. Now what we do is a little bit of addition to actually change the problem. We take a look at the bottom number. We want the bottom number to end up being a number that ends in zero. Since 19 is really close to 20, we're going to use 20. In order to get to 20, what I did was I added 1. And I put that there as my little reminder because I'm actually going to do the same thing to the number that I have on top. So I'm going to take 27 and add 1, and I end up with 28. Now, when I subtract, you'll notice I end up with a subtraction problem that I don't have to borrow to solve, which makes it a whole lot easier. And again, I end up with the same answer as I did in the traditional method. I still end up with 8. Let's take a look at another example. And again, we'll show it both ways. So, in our traditional method, we take a look at the bottom number in the ones place. The 8 here is bigger than the 4, so we go next door and borrow 1 from the tens place. We take that 1 10 that we borrowed and turn it into 10 ones and add it so that now the top number in the ones place is larger than the bottom. 14 minus 8 would give us 6. And 4 minus 3 would give us 1. So we end up with 16 as our answer. Now let's take a look at the same problem, but do it with the mental math. So again, we're going to start by looking at the bottom number. 38 is almost 40, and we want to go up. So I'm going to use 40, and to get to that 40, in this case, I added 2 more. So since I added 2 to my bottom number, I'm also going to add it to the top number. So 54 plus 2 is 56. And when I subtract, I end up with 16. Again, the same answer that I ended up with before. We always want that bottom number to go up. Sometimes that's going to be adding 6, 7, 8 to the number at the bottom. Okay? It's not rounding, and it's not quite compatible numbers either. Basically, we're looking for the next 10 that is above the number that's there. The way I suggested the students do that is to take the first number, add 1 to it, and then put a 0 behind it. 
So in this case, 3 plus 1 is 4, and put the 0 behind it to get the 40. Let's take a look at one more example. So we have 81 minus 65. Again, we'll start with the traditional method. Since my 5 is bigger than my 1, I cannot subtract and I have to borrow. I borrow 1 from the 10s, so it becomes a 7. I take that 1 10 and turn it into 10 1s. And when I add it to what I already have, I end up with 11. So 11 minus 5 gives us 6, and 7 minus 6 gives us 1. So we have a traditional method answer of 16. Our mental math should match. So let's try it with the mental math method. So again, I'm going to take the number at the bottom. Now, 65 is kind of tough because it ends in a 5, and I'd have to try to figure out what ends in a 0. So take the first number, add 1. 6 plus 1 is 7, then put a 0 behind it. So the next 10 up would be 70. In order to get to that 70, I had to add 5. So I'm also going to add 5 to the number at the top. 81 plus 5 gives me 86. Again, I now have a problem that I do not have to borrow. 6 gives us here. I subtract and get 1 here. Again, I end up with the same answer of 16 for both problems. Now, I'm going to put a problem up here for you to try. You can do either method. I will show both. You might even want to try doing it both ways because it's a great way to check and make sure that your answer is actually correct. So, you try 73 minus 58. Use either method or use both. Pause the video here, and then when you're finished working your problem, come back and you can check for your answer. Let's try it out. We're going to start with the traditional method first. Since the 8 is bigger than the 3, I have to borrow. I give the extra 10 to the 1's place, and now I end up with 13 minus 8. When I subtract 13 minus 8, I end up with 5. 6 minus 5 gives me 1. Now, if I choose to do it in the traditional method, I have 58 down here at the bottom. 58 is almost 60. And to get there, I had to add 2. So 73, my original number at the top, plus 2 would give me 75. Again, now I have a number that I do not have to borrow to subtract, and I end up with the same answer of 15. So again, on the test, the students get to choose which one, the traditional method or the mental math. They get to choose which one of those they want to use. The only thing that I ask is that they show their work. For that, they would show me the borrowing up here, or they would show me their addition with the new problem here. They could also use both to check their answers. So this is the type of subtraction that we talked about when we were using subtraction of two-digit numbers.